everyone and welcome back to Dream Daddy. I've actually already had to record the second date with Craig, um, but I didn't record properly so I had to go back to an earlier save point and we're going to redo it so that I can actually include it in my, in, yeah, so yeah, let's go, let's go message Craig. I might change the way I do it. Who knows? Um, pet every dog, apparently. Important. Grow your own vegetables. It's cheaper, I think. Mm, maybe. Maybe it is. I really want to get some good quality time in with Craig. The last time we hung out, he was so busy with the kids and fending off flirty mums that I feel like we barely talked. Ever since the first time I hung out, I've been trying to get up a little early for runs. I don't think I'm going to be as embarrassing as last time. Maybe I'll even be able to catch up with him now. I type out a message to him on dad book. Hey man, been training on my run game recently. Ready for a round two? Craig responds immediately. Dude, of course. Emojis. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know why he didn't just send an emoji rather than type it out. Another message pops into my inbox from Craig. Let's meet up tomorrow morning for my favourite morning activity. Brunch! I type back. Brunch? What's that? You run and then you get brunch. Oh, right. Brunch? Maybe. Craig and I agree to a time to meet in the morning and have a ch chance to spend the evening hanging out with Amanda. So, we doing pizza tonight? Again? Can't we do like a salad what? night? Dad, are you on a health kick? I, not yet. I formed the committee to examine the possibility of being on a health kick. They haven't returned with their findings. Mm -hmm. Dad, if you go on a health kick, then I have to go on a health kick by virtue of being under the same roof as you. I don't know if I have the constitution for that. Don't worry about it. The committee is still out. I'm sorry, Amanda. It's time. Hmm. Not if I have something to say about it. Suddenly, Amanda lunges for the phone before I can stop her. She has the pizza place on speed dial, of course. Hi, yes, can I get an extra large pizza with chicken, bacon, extra cheese, and tomatoes? Gross. And a couple of the garlic sauce cups. Amanda, you're going a little north here. Oh, right. Can you maybe throw some leaves on there or something? Yeah, he's going on a house kick. Yeah, Rico, I know. It's tragic. Amanda listens for a mm -hmm. second. Hold on, I'll ask. Mm -hmm. Dad... Is oregano a salad? It's a spice. Let's say it's not a salad. Can't blame me if you're trying. Nah, Rico, I'm talking to my dad. We'll just go with the meat lover's fantasy. Sure. Say hi to the wife and kids for me. Amanda hangs oh. up. Rico says, hey. The food gets to live in and we plop down on the couch to eat some czar. What? Oh. Just be careful. Running is a gateway drug. It's a slippery slope, Dad. First you go on a couple light jogs, and before you know it, you're converting the garage into a home gym and renewing your subscription to some sort of weekly kombucha delivery service. Question? Shoot. What's kombucha? Okay, so you aren't too far gone yet. Oh. I'm just giving you a hard time, Pops. I'm really happy you're running more and caring about your health. I'm going to keep you around for as long as possible. Oh, thanks, kiddo. Speaking of which, I'm running with Craig tomorrow. You going to be able to keep up with him? Hey! Probably not. <laughs> we laugh and eat more pizza than is probably healthy in the name of carbo-loading. I call it a night early so that I'm ready for tomorrow. Our daughter. When I first started running in the mornings, it was pretty hellish. Now that I'm a few sessions in, it admittedly has become a little bit easier, despite it always ending in me drive heaving over a trash can. Is that r run as high as just dry heaving? I lace up my tennis shoes, throw on a t-shirt from a writer sign I went to 20 years ago, and head out the door at a moderate jog. Craig is already outside with River, River, River strapped to his chest. Whoa. He's dressed head to toe in color coordinated running gear. Wow, I look like a total schlub next to this guy. Look at River. Hey, bro. Morning, Craig. River gonna be cra running with us? Best as she can. We're taking it to the limit, aren't we, kiddo? Look at her little bubbles. Gee. Oh. oh, I know what that means. Craig hands her a stuffed toy, which makes her smile from ear to ear. Aww. Mm -hmm. That's Arnold the Capybara. Sometimes it's the only thing that'll get her to stop crying. 
oh, I've been there. Amanda has a stuffed panda that she carried around everywhere. She would have a tantrum if we even tried to wash it. It was gross. So you've been running lately? I may or may not cut that out. Every morning for 30 minutes. I'm basically an elite athlete by this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll try and keep up. So where are we headed? Oh. I was thinking that we could do a couple laps around the park. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Oh. Then we'll do some hill climbs up a slope. Uh, okay, I can probably handle that. And then we'll close it off by doing some wilderness survival hike running to increase our agility. I'm suddenly struck with the overwhelming need to crawl back into bed. Mm -hmm. That sound okay to you? I usually like to throw some timed murder sprints in there, but I'll go easy on you since you're a beginner. That sounds like something I am able to physically do. Bro. Great, let's get started. Oh. Craig and I finally arrive at the park. A few other lone joggers make their way around the perimeter and river waves enthusiastically at everyone we pass. Oh, it's a lot more peaceful in the mornings. Aside from birds chirping and river gurgling away in the stroller, it's pretty quiet. Alright, good warm up. That was the warm up. Hey. Let's start the show. Hey. But wait. Craig reaches into his bag and tosses me a bot water bottle. I fumble it, but thankfully, don't drop it. Oh. You gotta hydrate, bro. Good advice. I will too. I take a long drink from the water bottle and feel reinvigorated. Man, I don't drink enough water. Hey! I look down and pick up Arnold with his toy and hand it back to her. Must have dropped this. Thanks for looking out, bro. Nice. You ready? My Yeah, my body is collapsing in on itself. Hmm. We finally finish our however many tenth lap around the park. I'm breathing heavily, but I can't believe I actually didn't lose Craig. He's even breathing heavily too, which makes me feel a little better. I look down at my shirt and notice that I'm drenched in sweat. Huh. Almost looks like a frowny face. That's one. What? Hey. I'm just kidding. Good hustle out there. I'm really impressed. You're way better than the last time I launched you off a treadmill. Yeah, man, you really pushed me to my limit just now. I can't believe I held on. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just need someone there with you to push you to do your absolute best. I'm glad I could be that guy, bro. <laughs> Who's ready for hill climbs? Black! There's my little cheerleader. Jerry, you ready? Uh, uh, uh. Let's go to the middle one. You bet! Craig takes me to a separate portion of the park where there's a steep hill that seems to go up forever. I strain my eyes to see some other joggers at the top. So what do we do now? We run up the thing. That looks like a lot. Jerry, there's two things you need to know about this hill. One, don't stop running till you get to the top. And two, Craig points to the top of the hill. That's not the top. Let's go for the long one. Oh, let's do this. I don't know. I finally reached the top of the hill after making my way past what I originally thought was the top of the hill. Once there, I hunch over onto my knees and gasp for air. My lungs are little, like little daggers, like daggers poking my ribs. I can feel my heart in my ears. <laughs> River, I'm having a moment, please. Oh boy. Craig looks like he's taking a beating as well. Ha! So he is human. Jerry, put your arms on your head and stretch out your elbows. It'll help you breathe better. And do as Craig says. It feels a little, little better, but I'm still in agony. Oh. And here. Craig tosses me the water bottle again. I hydrate like my life depends on it. Thanks, dude. Nice. Phenomenal work. You feel that lightness in your head? That's the runner's high. Oh, that's it. I thought I was just, you know, dying. Hmm. Want to take it slow for a bit? I would like that very much. As we're catching our breath, River starts crying. What's wrong, sweet pea? Do you want to play with Arnold? Craig looks around us. Oh boy. Man down. I think we lost Arnold. River keeps wailing. I've abandoned my child's toy. We've got to find him, dude. It should be simple, right? we just got to retrace our steps. I remember River last having it down at the bottom of the hill. Hmm. Craig and I jog down the path, searching high and low for the stuff capybara, which Craig takes the time to explain to me is a large rodent native to South America. We get to the place where River might have dropped it, but it's still nowhere to be found. Looks like we've got a mystery on our hands. We have to get to the bottom of this. 
I suspect foul play. Looks like this is a prime case for world-renowned Detective Dadley. Dude, it's time for a bro adventure. A bro adventure! Yes. Oh. We high five and decide to jog back to the park to see if we can find any leads. Oh. So it looks like there's a couple more places to check and some bros around here that we could interrogate. Sounds good. Wait, who's good cop and who's bad cop? I think about it for a second. Well, I think that with your stature and overall resilience, you would make an intimidating bad cop. But on the other hand, you do have an adorable baby strapped to your chest, so that softens the edges a bit. Oh. All valid points. I think you would make a great good cop because of your congenial attitude and willingness to try new things. But then again, I've seen how you get when there are too many commercial breaks during a show, so you have the potential to be a scary bad cop. I don't want to have to watch Meet Hal in three minute segments with five minutes of commercials in between. And they're loud. The commercials are too loud. I just want to watch my shows in peace without people yelling at me to buy wiper fluid and stuff. Hey. Case in point. Let's play it moment by moment. Right. Smart. Hmm. So, where to, protective? Um, let's go to the playground. We go to a small playground at the edge of the park. A couple of kids play in the jungle gym while parents watch on the nearby benches. Over one of the benches, I spot a familiar face. Let's talk to Joseph. Let's see what Joseph's up to. We jog over to Joseph, who seems to be engrossed in his book. Joseph! Joseph nearly drops his book. Hey guys, didn't think I'd see you two out here. Jerry, are you exercising? Sure am. You know me, I just love to run and be healthy. That's kind of my whole thing. What are you reading? Oh. oh, just a book of knots and rope tying. Oh. For boats! Boat ropes! <laughs> right. Hmm. Say, you didn't happen to see a stuffed capybara around hmm. here. What's a capybara? Nice. It's a large rodent that's native to South America. Joseph thinks for <laughs> a second. Hmm, haven't seen one around. I'll tell the kids to keep an eye out. Your kids are here? Joseph looks around. They were here a second ago. Must have gone exploring around the park. Do you know where they could have run off to? They're kids. They get into mischief sometimes, but they always come back. That sounds a little suspect, Joseph. Mischief, you say? I, uh... Wait, am I being interrogated right now? No, yes. Just doing our due diligence, Joseph. Arnold means a lot to River here. I mean, you're more than welcome to ask Christian and Christy. I imagine they have the ears to the ground in all the latest playground drama. There might be somewhere around the woods. Thanks, Joseph. We'll let you get back to your rope book. Yeah. Boat ropes! We're back to the playground. Let's try to calm River down. This is a pretty nice playground. Might as well get a couple swings in. What about Arnold? Maybe having a little swim, swing might calm River down. Might buy us some more time. You're right. She's about to go nuclear. This might prepare her for the possibility of us not being able to find Arnold. Life is cruel and tough, but at least we'll always have swings. Craig straps River into the baby swing and gives her a gentle push. She giggles. I take a seat on the swing next to her and immediately realise that I'm stuck. River seems to love that. Craig eventually helps me out of the swing and we decide to get back to the investigation. Head back to the playground. Hmm, I wonder if there's any clues left. Let's see. Craig and I, two grown adults, walk onto the playground and begin examining it meticulously for clues. There's no forensic evidence here, no stray capybara here, at least. After searching fruitlessly for some time, we look up. All the other, all of the parents are staring at us. We smile and wave as we awkwardly slink off. We head back to the playground. Okay, let's go to another part of the park. Where to now, bro? Um, Christian and Christy are. At uh, might be at the woods. We make our way to the outskirts of the park. There's a couple of benches by the dense tree line. Looks like Robert's here all by himself. This also seems like the perfect place to look for clues. Joseph's of twins must be around here somewhere. Look for clues. Craig and I search through the outskirts of the woods, hoping to find anything that may lead us to Arnold. There are a couple of cigarettes and empty beer cans scattered around the thicket. This is probably the hot spot for EG teens to hang out at night and say swears and stuff. <laughs> But it doesn't look like there's, there was any recent activity that might be capybara related. This might be a dead end, partner, bro. Turn to the woods. Just turn, let's talk to Robert. Maybe Robert saw something. We walk over to Robert's yeah. bench. Hey, Rob. Mm. Don't call me that. Okay. Hi, Robert. Mm. Don't call me that either. Um. Okay. Hey, 
buddy. Oh. What are you up to? Oh. Thinking. This is my thinking bench. Oh. I have to get a solid two to three hours of brooding in per day. Filling quotas. Mm. Have you by any chance seen a small stuffed capybara around? Capybara is... It's a large rodent native to South America. I know. Oh. So have you seen oh. one? A stuffed one, not a real one. That would be weird. Hmm. Let's be... Good cop. Come on, Robert. The sooner you tell us what you know, the sooner we can let you get back to brooding. Oh. Bad cop time. Robert, if you don't help us, I'm going to put you in a headlock. Mm -hmm. Is that a threat or a promise? I... Whoa, slow down. Hey. Back off. We return to the woods. Joseph Twins must be around here somewhere. <sighs> I've deduced where we should go next. Let's go to the field, because we haven't tried the field yet. We wander out to the grassy field at the centre of the park. There isn't a whole lot to see, but there are a few figures camped out on a blanket, and the grass could hold any number of secrets. Matt and Kev and Sita look for clues, interrogate river, interrogate river. Mm. Wait, let me try this. It's always the culprit you least expect. I get eye to eye to river, who still looks like she's on the verge hey. of tears. Good. <coughs> hey, sweetie, believe me, nobody wants you to find your capybara more than me, but we need more clues, and I think somewhere in that baby brain of yours, you might have something that'll lead us to the perp. So what do you say, kiddo? Meh. <coughs> I turn to Craig. We're getting no with the witness. <laughs> okay. Field. Let's look for clues. We carefully comb through the field of grass and flowers. I can't seem to find much beside a couple of ladybugs and a nickel. While looking, Craig calls out to me across from across the field. Jerry! Hi. I jog over. Craig is kneeling in the grass, inspecting something. I approach. My heart in my throat. As I lean over Craig, I see it. This is Arnold's leg. I pull my hand. I put my hand over River's eye. No one should have to be subjected to this senseless violence. My God, who or what would do this? I don't know. I don't know. But now I think we might be dealing with something beyond our grasp. I can't look at this anymore. I turn around, trying to wipe the image of the stuffing strewn across the ground from my mind. I don't know. We're running out of time. We may already be too late. Bag and tag it. Let's keep moving. We manoeuvre back to the field. Matt and Carmen Sita, let's talk to Matt and his daughter. Carmen Sita spots us from across the way in waves. She's sitting down with her dad on a sunny green patch of grass. We jog over. Hey. hey, dudes. Hey, bro. We just sat down for a picnic. Want some snacks? Hmm. Got anything to increase my glycogen reserves? Uh, with apple slices? Oh. Thank you very much, tiny bro, but I should be fine. Hey, yeah. Uh... You guys working out? Good day for it. Yep, I'm the picture of health and athleticism. Oh. Good transition, Jerry. Say, you haven't seen a stuffed capybara around here anywhere, have you? Hmm. What's a capybara? It's a large rodent that's native to South America. Wait a second, how do you not know what a capybara is? You wouldn't happen to have had hands-on experience with one recently, would you? We learned about capybaras in the fourth grade. I think it's more suspicious that you know what a capybara is. Hey. Oh my god. What if I took Arnold? What if I'm the culprit and I just don't remember? I quickly check my body for any Polaroids I might have kept on my person to remind me of who to trust and who not to trust. I saw Memento once. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Nothing. What if that's, what, if that's what I wanted myself to think? No, Jerry. Don't let them win. I shake off the thought. I saw a couple of squirrels over by that tree, though. I don't know if that helps, but if you want to see some cute, cute squirrels, you should definitely check it I... out. Thanks for the hot squirrel tip, Calman Sita. Mm -hmm. Well, we better get moving. Gotta find that Kimbara before River here has a breakdown. Hey. Good luck. Let me get some apples for the road, though. Calman Sita hooks me up with some road slices. Slices were on our way. Back to the field. Check out the squirrels. Where did the suspects have the squirrels would be again? She said the tree... But do we want to look at the other things? Let's go find a look. We take a look at a nearby Moscow run and find out a single squirrel. Didn't realise Carmen Sita was a liar. We move back to the field. Clock's ticking, dude. Where are we going next? Oh, God. Um, check out the playground again. Back to the playground. Um, 
Rafa has had enough of the swings, her mind will be singing her focus on Arnold until some other Johnny come lately plush comes along or her next nap, whatever comes first. Okay, let's go to so to put the pieces of this case together or I have indigestion, we better keep moving. Let's go back to the woods. Turn to the woods, just twins must be around here somewhere. Let's talk to Robert. Time to call Robert again. We will go over to Robert's bench. Oh Christ, what now? I'll be bad cop. Robert, I'm going to keep being vaguely threatening until you tell us something useful. I haven't seen any goddamn cop capybara, okay? Crap, I was really naming the bad cop bit, too. I thought hey. sure we had something. Now what, bro? Joseph said his twins were around here somewhere, but I have no idea we were supposed to f how we're supposed to oh. find them. Wait, those creepy kids? Why didn't you tell me they had something to do with this? Huh? Maybe I should have left the good cop, bad cop routine to the pros on TV. Hey! Yeah, Robert, bro, do you know where they are? <sighs> I do. A lot of people underestimate the senses of the man who broods. I saw them lurking around here a little while ago. Where'd they hey. go? Ran into the woods. I'd be careful, though. I don't trust them. But in the end, I don't trust anyone. <clears throat> Not even you guys. Well, oh. okay. Not even that baby. Brat. <laughs> mm -hmm. I take that back. You're an old soul, kiddo. <laughs> oh. Thanks for your help, Robert. River Screecher is louder than ever. I'm exhausted. Craig is <clears throat> exhausted. Ah, oh, buddy, I got a rain check on branch. Oops, uh, all right, good luck, bro. Thanks, bro. Oh, no. Back to the cold sick alone and head inside the house. God, I'm ready for a shower, a gallon of water, and a nap. Hmm, I bet Amanda's still asleep. Huh. I crack open her door to find her still in bed, sleeping scroll sleepily scrolling through her phone. Morning. Afternoon, actually. Mm -hmm. Right, how was brunch? Well, we had a good time with the run part, but we didn't make it to the rest of the pomanto. Huh? Huh? To brunch. We didn't make it to brunch. Somehow we lost River's toy capybara on our run. A capybara yeah. is, Dad, don't patronize me about giant rodents. I know. Sorry. Anyway, we figured out that Joseph's creepy, creepy twins had something to do with it, but we never got to the bottom of it. I wonder if he can. Hmm. So the run went well, though? I was a little worried about your endurance. Yeah, it was rough at first, but it ended up being a piece of cake. I actually feel pretty gr- Hey! My legs give out. I find myself on the floor of the hallway. I'm just going to hang out here for a while. You take your time getting up. <sighs> Don't trust gas station egg sandwiches. Date complete. <laughs> At least he didn't place last. Oh, see, good lord. Okay. Not so good then. That's not so good. <sighs> Try to exercise regularly. Just make me. Okay. Some fun stuff ahead of us. Okay. Well, it's been a long day. I'm just about ready to pack it in. After a few bites of ice cream from the freezer, I turn off all the lights and walk down the hallway to my room. I wonder if Amanda's still awake. The qu that kid needs some sleep. As I pass her room, I can hear a faint sound, sound, but can't quite make out what it is. I get a little closer. Is she crying? I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda. The crying immediately stops. Not right now. Her voice sounds strained. She sniffles. Her voice sounds strained. She sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. <laughs> in the dark, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed, knees hugged up against her body. Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. Did something happen? No, nothing happened. Go away. Leave her alone. Alright, I'll leave you be. I back out of the room and close the door gently behind me. She merely starts crying again. Wow. I have no idea what has her so upset. She, seem, she seems totally normal. I feel awful just leaving her to cry, but I also get the feeling that if I tried to do anything else, it would only have made her more upset. I can't stop mentally cycling through all sorts of awful things she could be dealing with right now. More than anything, I just want her to be happy and safe. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. After a long night of very little sleep, I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school soon. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about what's huh? bothering her. About ten minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning.
morning, Manda. Morning. She drops a frozen waffle into the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything big going on at school today? <sighs> no. Okay. Do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls a toaster lever up and takes her still freezer burned. Waffle out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Oh, okay. I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short-lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal soon. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at a picture of Amanda and I hanging on on a wall. In it, I'm teaching her to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and something blub. Why did I click so soon? Every time she would fall off and scrape her knees, she would get up and try it again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. Then she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. As I put the bike away, she just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her for ice cream and it was like nothing even happened. After giving it a bit of thought, I decide that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. But I have an idea. I start rummaging around for ingredients. I hear Amanda walk in the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline to her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin? What? Can you come here for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Yeah. I wanted to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared, scared when I know something's wrong, and I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So just, whatever it is, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but whatever it is, just know that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. Hmm. Honey, you know I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak a language we both understand. I pull a cake out of the refrigerator and place it on the table. Hopefully the frosting has set by now. Ta-da! Dad, it took me a really long time because I started to run out of red frosting somewhere around sad and had to start over and... Sorry, you're sad, but I support you 100%. Heart, oh, that's so cute. Oh. <laughs> this is beautiful. It's strawberry. Amanda gives me a big old hug. I grab some plates and forks and serve us up some delicious cake. So... It's really stupid. What is? This whole thing. I know I've been really weird lately and there's just... I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? Ah. I, guess you, I guess I should start from the top. So you know how Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California, right? Emma R. The one who puked in dead goth and beyond. That was Amanda, the best friend. The other one. I'm pretty sure she was ah. the best friend. You got it. Wow. Proud of you. <laughs> Anyways, ever, she got, ever since she got the acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know? And she's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P. I just thought it was all in my head for a while, but then I found out from Rosie M that both of the Emmas, Grace and Noah, all went to a party at Mackenzie F's on the same night. They all told me they were busy studying for the Cal KB final. Yikes. Mm. So, another important piece of information is... Oh, uh, God, this is embarrassing. I am... Um, have a question, Noah, and, uh, that's a thing. What? Whoa! I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that. Okay. You're a bad liar. So are you. I learnt from the worst. Oh. Anyway, so the only person I told about the crush was Emma R, and she promised not to tell anybody. I didn't confront them about the party thing because I didn't want to start drama, so I just keep quiet and keep going about my business. Amanda sighs. And then one day I invite everybody out to get nachos at the mall and after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them ever put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, they all say they're busy, like, simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind, I'll just eat nachos at home, right? But we were out of chips and I really, really wanted nachos. Totally understandable. Aww. So I go to the mall anyway and I get to the food court and who do I see there but Grace, Emma P, Emma R and Noah. All hanging out together and eating nachos without me. What? Uh. It gets better. I'm standing by the escalators watching them and I realise that Noah has his arm around Emma R, which is kind of weird, right? But then they kiss! No. <laughs> yes, I know! So I storm over there and I'm like, hey! And Grace drops the nacho on her shirt because of course she does and Emma R just like glares at me. Grace. Grace. Nothing is coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the 
boring one, gossipy one. Did she poop the bed too? Gossipy <laughs> one? I know! Uh. Grace is the one nobody really likes. Or I guess that's me now. But anyway, nobody will say anything. And I'm just like, you guys suck. Which I realize is not the most eloquent thing to say. But I was very angry and really embarrassed. And I just wanted to get out of there. So I left. Without Nacho's money ad, Which only further contributed to this shitty day. And immediately drafted a super long text to the group chat. Asking them why they've been so weird. And I wrote another one to Emma R. Asking how long the Noah thing's been going on. And... Sorry, I know that's a lot. You're still following? What's it in my RJ? I'm a little confused, but I think I understand. I have no idea what's happening. That's okay. You're trying. So what happens next? Oh, okay. Get a load of this. Emma R says, you know what? Let me just read it to you. Amanda pulls out her phone and reads word for word an arduously long string of text messages. Hmm. Can you believe that? I cannot believe that. I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental mental well-being but man do I not understand what she's talking about this is all beyond me but I'm trying my hardest to be supportive uh. they were dating in secret for like months so I told her that she's being a really terrible friend she's like well if you think I'm so terrible then just stop being my friend and I was like okay and then she left me on red and then wait left me on red what's that oh like she saw my message and didn't reply and I know because there are red receipts I don't know what read receipts are, but I'm just going to know, know it and pretend. I understand. It would be read receipts, wouldn't it? I don't know why I say that. Gotcha. So while this is all happening, I'm talking to Emma P about how mad I am because she's at least being kind of reasonable and I'm venting to her about how pissed I am at everybody and stuff. <laughs> and then out of nowhere, Noah texts me and is like, how could you say that about me? And I'm like, say what about you? And he tells me that Emma P sent screenshots of everything and told her Everything I told her to the group chat that I got kicked out of. Oh my god. Alright, I think you lost me at screenshots, but that definitely sounds bad. Mm -hmm. There's so much more, but honestly, it's all just really stupid teenager stuff. The bottom line is that everybody dropped me. Half of my grade hates me, and now I have no friends. Amanda, I'm so sorry. I most expected from everybody else, but uh. Emma R's been there since Dad died. I can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that. Not even that mad that she's dating Noah. I'm just super upset that she lied to me about it for so long. Amanda stabs at the remnants of her cake. Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everybody, everyone just suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. And as mad as I am at everybody, like, I miss them, Dad. Amanda looks so dejected, I almost can't take it. What could I possibly say to help? Hmm. Anyways, that's it. That's the whole sordid tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Wow. I know it's pretty dumb. It's not dumb. No, it's a st stupid thing to be upset over. Amanda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. I guess. Unless you've secretly been a robot who's been approximating human feelings this whole time. Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long time ago. So you might ask, like, want to cry or something? But seriously, I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. Not all friendships last forever. Real friends don't do that in high school sucks. When you get older, you start realising the sort of people you want to associate yourself with. Do you really want to surround yourself with people who would do something like that to their friend? It takes a lot of work to find and maintain meaningful friendships. It took me a long time to figure that out myself, and I wish I had learned it sooner. If the other person is put, isn't putting the effort in to show you how much they care, it's not worth it. You're not beholden to being their friend. Ultimately, I think this is way more about their character than it does about yours. Because you're amazing. And if they can't see that, well, that's their problem. It's so true. Ah. I'll keep that in mind. I look down at the table. Did we just eat that whole cake? Ah. Yes, we did just eat that whole cake. Whoop. Good talk. Amanda gets up to go to her room. Before she closes her door, she turns around. Hey, Pops. Yes? Ah. Thank you. You are always welcome. Love you, man. I love you too, Dad. Welcome. Okay. You've got dads. Oh, you've got dads. Okay, then. Well, then. I guess that is... 
Pat, for this episode, we got a bit of a information drop from Amanda. We got a C with our date with Craig, so like, yeah, but not so good. Um, um, I guess next time, maybe second date with Robert. But then we've got S's with Damien Huber. Maybe we should look at them. And then look back and maybe Robert or Brian. Um, but we'll decide that in the next episode. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!